Hi, my name is Easter. Welcome to the Easter Basket. And we're here today for the Tome 3 Rift 3 Guide. This is where behavior really takes the kid gloves off and they want to twist your nuts. Some of these challenges are really awful compared to Tome 2. So we're going to go through and see if we can help the newer mid-hour players among you to get these done as efficiently as possible. Because again, some of these are just absolutely brutal. So starting with the killer challenges as usual, hook 12 different survivors. So with this, you want to use something like Billy, you want to use something like Bubba, you want to use somebody who is really efficient at downing one survivor after another, because essentially what this is, this will take three games if you hook each survivor once in all three games, which you might not get. It took me four games to do this because I had one game where I only hooked three people because one of them DC'd. Uh, so it shouldn't be too difficult. The next one is start a chase with 20 different survivors. Again, this one is just going to take you five games, but this one should definitely take you only five. It is not hard to encounter each survivor once in the course of a game, even if you have to run around um, just trying to find them, do what you got to do, you'll track them down. Uh, next one, Mechanical Mayhem. Damage five different generators in a single trial. The way I did this was I used Wraith. I used a Windstorm add-on with him, so he moves faster when he's in stealth. And I used the add-on that makes him kick generators faster whenever he is stealth. And I just roamed around. I would find somebody, I would kick a gen, and then I would leave them until I had kicked five different generators. I didn't even care about winning that game. I just wanted this challenge done. Uh, this is the first of the difficult challenges, and this is probably the most obnoxious of the three specific challenges. Why is that? This is seizing Discord. Interrupt and grab two survivors while they are working on a generator and you are using the perk Discordance. So, which killer has Discordance? Legion. Legion is not a stealth killer. So if you try to walk up behind somebody on a generator, they're just going to run away. So, this is less a master as in master difficulty challenge and more of a do you have the pieces to this puzzle that being said there are a couple solutions and i'll list them in order of ease of difficulty if you have these killers and these perks so if you have discordance on ghostface ghostface is by far the easiest person to do this challenge with you can wait uh, you don't excuse me discord doesn't even necessarily have to proc you can sneak up if your generator being done find the shortest path to get from uh, hiding from sight to the generator, sneak around, and just try to grab whoever's on the generator that happens to be worked on. That's the easiest way. You can also use Michael Myers with the Scratch Mirror add-on in Discordance, so he does not have a terror radius. Uh, the third method you could potentially use is you could use Nurse with the Blink Distance and a perk like monitor and abuse to reduce your terror radius. You can blink right behind them, but in this case, like me, uh, this is what I've been trying to do since I don't have discordance on Myers or uh, Ghostface. I've been trying to use that method, but it's really tough to get grabs to register when you're coming out of the teleport. Uh, even if you're right behind them, more often you'll hit them than not. So if you have Ghostface or Myers, those are by far the easiest ways to get this done. Next one, Ruthless Aggression. Earn three malicious emblems of silver quality or better. You get this for uh, hitting survivors and preventing them from healing. So uh, of, all, of all the killers to do this on, if you're particularly attached to Plague, do not use Plague for this challenge because whenever survivors cleanse, it counts against this emblem. So that's all it is. It's only silver quality, so this should be a relatively easy uh, killer challenge to get. Destroyer of Hope. Hook four survivors during the endgame collapse. If you're new, you're having trouble, use Noed. Uh, that's by far the easiest way to get this perk done. If you have Noed and especially Blood Warden, so if you have access to Freddy, then Freddy with Noed and Blood Warden will be by far the easiest way to get this uh, this challenge done since survivors really love to stick around during the end game collapse and wait for you to chase them out the gate. So you could probably get two or three uh, in a single game if you use that perk combination. Golden Age earn 20 emblems of gold quality or better. This just requires good games. Uh, if you focus on one individual emblem at a time, say playing Legion so survivors don't heal, um, playing. Uh, Billy to stop 
survivors from finishing gens very fast and gatekeeping them. Uh, doing stuff like that will let you get gold quality medals better. Uh, if you have trouble if you have trouble playing really good games as killer, then focus on one or two aspects of the game and focus on getting those emblems gold. And there uh, shouldn't be a problem getting this, but this is a very again very tedious challenge. That's going to be a, a node of constant throughout uh, Rift 3 and Rift 4 is some of the challenges are going to be really tedious. Earn 100,000 blood points. Again, uh, this one should be relatively easy if you have barbecue and chili. Again, remember if you have streamers, if you have uh, your survivor puddings, this is the time to use them because those blood points count towards this challenge. So if you have barbecue and chili, get four stacks of barbecue and chili, throw down a uh, bloody party streamer or a survivor pudding and in the course of one game you can easily get this challenge done if you have a decent one uh, darkly obsessed hook the obsession 15 times uh, this is another very difficult one to do and very grindy one to do unless you have the specific perk set for it so anything that will allow you to switch your obsession will make this challenge so much easier because normally you only have one obsession in a game unless the survivors have decisive, stri decisive strike available. So one of the things you can do, even though it will be um, very, very uh, against the survivor handbook, as they say to do, if you unhook somebody and they're not the obsession, you can uh, allow them to de-strike you and then down them again and hook them. And that will give you a point of this challenge. Otherwise, I highly suggest using the perk Nemesis. Uh, the perk Nemesis, whenever somebody stuns you, I think specifically Pallet stuns you, then they become the obsession, and you can chase them down and hook them. So in the course of one game, if you did it perfectly, you could get 12 of these. That's probably not going to happen. You can reasonably walk out of a game, uh, even if you only have to play Oni with... Uh, maybe four or five obsession hooks, and this will take um, between three and five games to do. So not too grindy, not too bad. Uh, next we'll go up to Feral Carnage. Hit survivors four times in a single use of Feral Frenzy as the Legion. So as I mentioned last time, where you had to hit survivors three times, an important thing to note is that you do not have to hit all four survivors. You can hit a survivor twice, but that does end your frenzy. So if you hit three people and you don't see the fourth heartbeat, or you don't think you can get to the fourth heartbeat, you can hit the third person twice, and that will count this challenge, which is an easy way to get it done. Bullseye. So this is going to be the second hardest one in this uh, blood web for new players, uh, blood web in this rift for new players, because Hundress's distant hatchets have a bit of an arc to them and they're kind of hard to hit so especially if a survivor knows how to dodge they're going to be running behind things they're going to be crouching uh, so if you have to use an open map offering with a bunch of low stuff mcmillan is probably the best choice for this because you can arc it over a lot of the cars that are present on the map so uh, another solution and this is I, w I would say against the spirit of the challenge is if you play against a twitch.tv survivor, you can go into their channel and say, hey, or if you're on console, you can send them a message and say, hey, I'm really trying to get this challenge done. Please, please, please help me get this done and I'll help you get your challenge done. If you have to do that to get it done, this is a particularly very, very difficult challenge to do for new players. Um, what you can also do is you can hook somebody on a hook stand a long distance away that you know you can hit the hatchet and then when somebody goes to unhook them uh, you can stand in front of them so you can hit them on the left or the right side and throw the hatchet from that distance if that's what you have to do that's what you have to do to get the challenge done and the last killer challenge hook four different survivors in a single trial so this is going to be uh, a little difficult depending on the killer that you choose. The best base killer for this is probably going to be Billy uh, because Billy can chainsaw one person, see another one across the map. If somebody comes to rescue, he can down the person that rescues relatively quickly. So Billy is probably going to be the best person to do this particular challenge on, but uh, use whatever killer you're best with. If you're confident on Hag, if you're confident on on any killer that you think you can hook all four different survivors in one map, I say go for that one.
All right, next come the survivor perks. Freedom Fighter, unhook 12 different survivors, must unhook them safely. If you have to unhook survivors safely, I highly recommend Bill uh, because borrowed time pretty much guarantees that you can unhook somebody safely. If not, uh, use Jake's perk Iron Will, use Nia's perk Urban Evasion, and try to immerse from the killer as much as possible so you can un unhook them as far away from the killer as possible. But borrowed time essentially guarantees that every unhook you get will result in a safe unhook which also gives you more points so that's a positive uh, unhooking 12 different survivors um you can probably get f between four to seven unhooks in a game especially if you're new uh so this will take between uh three two to three games depending on how uh depending on how brutal the killer plays next one is benevolence earn three benevolent emblems of gold quality or higher uh, you get this from unhooking people, you get this from healing people. So take your med kits, take, uh, take your borrowed times, take we'll make it, take anything that gives you better healing speed, better med kit efficiency, and uh, go with that. Should be a relatively easy one to get. Boiling point. Escape one trial while using the perk boil over. Escape trials are typically uh, more easily done in a group. If you don't have access to a group, take a key. If that's what it takes to get this challenge done, especially if you don't have the points in Kate or in a survivor that has boil over, just take a key with your level one Kate and escape out the hatch. If that's what you have to do to get this challenge, get it done. A craft times over, cleanse 20 totems. This is going to be a very, very grindy, very, very grindy survivor challenge because at maximum, there are five totems in a game. If by some miracle you manage to cleanse all five of them without another survivor doing it, so say if you're in a group and none of the other survivors need to do this challenge, then this will take you four games to do. However, if you are in a group of randoms, there's a chance some of them will also be doing totem cleansing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this could take up to six or seven games to do if you're particularly unlucky. Uh, so take... Detective Taps perk, uh, Detective's Hunch, which let you, lets you see where all the totems are. If you don't have that, you can take Small Game, which is a generic perk, and that will let you uh, ping you if a killer trap or totem is within uh, eight yards in front of you, and that will help you find totems easier to get this challenge done. Grease Monkey, fully deplete for toolboxes. Uh, you can just take brown toolboxes in and dump them immediately. Uh, this should be a very, very easy one to do. If you want to take plunderers, uh, you can also do chests. Try to get this done fast by uh, dumping your toolbox, searching a chest, finding another toolbox, dumping that toolbox. Uh, so you could potentially, I could see doing probably three toolboxes in a single match. So this could take you anywhere from two to four matches to do, depending on uh, where you whether you take a toolbox in or if you find toolboxes, but I would recommend taking a toolbox in using uh, Plunderer's Instinct and then finding uh, more toolboxes to dump into generators. All right, next we go down here, I believe. Uh, Dwight the Brave. Hide within 10 meters of a killer without being caught for a total of 60 seconds, S. Dwight Fairfield. Uh, so this can be a grindy challenge uh, because it, requires you to complete it in a single trial so honestly the easiest way to get this done if you're low rank is to wait for a killer to face camp and hide around the killer that is face camping if you can't do that um level dwight until he has perks like urban evasion if you've leveled nia or iron will if you'd level jake uh if not you're pretty much just going to have to follow the killer around and hide around them whenever they pick up survivors, whenever they do anything that they're not necessarily going to be looking for you if you're not confident in your hiding skills. Um, but eventually, after a little bit of grinding, it shouldn't be too difficult a thing to do, and the more perks you have, the easier it is to do this. Sing another day. Escape one trials when your next time on the hook would immediately sacrifice you as Kate Denson. So, Again, this is going to be another one. I'm going to say bite the, bite the bullet, use a key if necessary, because this essentially requires you that you be on your second hook, that you survive getting unhooked and not tunneled off of your second hook, and that you then escape. So again, a group is the easiest way to do this. If you don't have access to a group, take a key. Take a key. 
And uh, even better, if you take plunderers and you find a key, you can leave it in a chest until you've been hooked for your second time. So the killer doesn't tunnel you because you have a key, which killers will do. Next one is Deadly Race. Be chased by the killer for a total of 300 seconds. If you are not confident in how uh, in running a killer, my suggestion would be to take Sprint Burst. Wait for the killer to get within distance of you. Uh, even if it's a Huntress, hide behind a wall and then take off with Sprint Burst because you will start the chase and they will usually start running after you. That way, even if they do catch you, it will generally be uh, 20 to 30 seconds each time they chase you when you use Sprint Burst. So if you have to do that, it will take you um, up to 10 chases using that methodology to get this, which is about four games, assuming you lose every chase, which isn't too bad if you're not comfortable in running killers. Next is Strategic Alliance. Perform a cooperative action for 240 seconds. Use a group for this. Use one friend. If you don't have a friend, don't use... If you don't have a friend, make sure you're not using perks like Prove Thyself that make things faster if you're working with a group because you want it to be as long as possible. You want to stretch those seconds. So if you're in a group, just work with one additional other person. Use on a gin. Heal with one additional other person and eventually you'll crash this out a gen with one person i believe takes 72 seconds so if you do four gens with exactly two people uh, from empty to full that should get you this challenge as long as you're not using any bonuses like toolboxes or prove thyself or anything like that thorough cleansing finish the trial with no more than zero totems remaining and escape Again, this is going to be very easy to do in a group. If you have access to Detective Tap, this is also going to be relatively easy. Detective Tap has a perk called Detective's Hunch. Whenever a gen is completed, it shows you every chest, every totem within a, I think it is 60 yard radius of you. So especially if you do a map offering for a small map like the game, all you have to do is complete one generator. Well, you have to escape, so I wouldn't do it for the game. All you have to do is complete one generator, and you'll be able to see the majority of the totems around you, and you can just go around cleansing, 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 down to zero totems. That being said, if you have a group, this would be much, much easier, so you can make sure that you have all five done, because you won't know when Detective's Hunch fires if someone else has cleansed a totem. So you could be at four, looking around for the other one, and you'll just have to assume that somebody else cleanses it, unless you're in a group. Next one is Engineer's Elegy. Repair five different generators for at least one second each in a single trial. So this one, you're pretty much just going to have to tap a gen, run around, tap a gen, tap, tap a gen, run around. Uh, taking an iridescent map that sees a lot of things by default is probably the best way to do this because you can run to where a generator is, tap it, activate the map, run to another gen that you haven't been to, activate the map, run to another gen that you haven't been to, activate the map, and then you can look at the map, uh, look around, and see where on the map gens are that aren't highlighted on your map, because I believe it starts with three by default. And then you can look around and touch gens that, uh, look for gens that are on the map that you haven't seen yet. And so if you're just running around tapping them, it should be relatively easy to get this particular one done. And that is Tome 3 Rift 3. So uh, you can catch me at youtube.com slash the Easter Basket if you're here, like the video. You can also catch me streaming. My schedule is a little bit wonky, but you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash the Easter Basket. And with that, I hope you learned something, and I hope you get this done quickly. Thanks, guys.